New York City, Surrey Park being presented. We were always shown a series of maps that describe what happened that day uh, when Sandy came in. Uh, I would like to just ask any of you to comment or, or spend a minute or two uh, telling me and the audience uh, basically what it was like on the ground when uh, the storm hit and what lessons come out of that experience that you had there that might help us as designers address that. And I want to use the term design in a different way here. Uh, the same way we bring, bring design principles, that designing a particular building or a piece of infrastructure, we might want to take those same skills and think about how we can design the programmatic interventions, how we can design the social interventions so that we can address that problem. It's something I learned from Parsons, by the way. They are now using design in a much more generic sense uh, than just designing buildings. So who would like to volunteer just uh, describing that day or uh, any other days that just you know, uh, experience, uh, made an impression on you? So um, let me just jump in. Um, so uh, I guess on the day of the storm, uh, me and my family were not in Rockways. And the day after the storm, I decided to come back and see what had happened. And um, I, uh, I think there were a lot of reports on the news, and people really didn't know what uh, the truth was and what had really happened. Um, and um, you know, one of the things I think I was most struck by was it was there was kind of a silence um, for a period of time, um, and that silence came from the fact there was no communication, there was no lights, there was no. Uh, service and connection to outside, um, and yet there were thousands of people that were still there um, and who had not left, and the first reaction was we didn't think it was going to be so bad. We had had a storm pr the prior year, um, Storm Irene, and I think uh, people said, well, nothing happened then, why would it you know, have been any worse? Um, but I think the first, the first few hours was uh, people coming out and exploring and taking a look um, there were other areas that I explored that were not necessarily in the surrounding area where we work. Um, and I wanted to go down to some of the areas um, that had been affected by fires in the Rockaways to find out what had happened. And um, there were a couple of individuals, um, specifically seniors, who I had uh, walked around uh, that next day to the areas. And I was a little concerned because some of them I didn't know if they had seen what had happened. Um, and. Uh, so it was a little traumatizing to take them through um, to see entire blocks that had been burned down directly outside these people's homes. Um, and it was for the first time for them. Sometimes they were noticing, you know, they were figuring out what had really happened, that a complete um, commercial block had been burned to the ground. Um, and the first thing I did actually was, uh, we have a building uh, in the 50s, uh, Beach 59th Street Firehouse. and. I initially wanted to open the doors and start doing uh, uh, rehabilitation and, and reach outreach to the community, and um, uh, but I was scared. I was scared that we had never done this before. I was scared that maybe we couldn't have closed our doors if it got out of control. Um, and there were there was no one around for safety. So if it had really gotten out of control, it would have been a really scary situation. Um, but I wanted to assess what had happened. I wanted to see what the situation was and how we could really help. Um, and I did that for that first day after the storm. Um, I went out and started to open up some of the other facilities and some of the other locations in the Rockaways. Um, started to muck out some of those areas and get uh, people starting to move again. And then I went into the city and found a location where I had access to phones and just started phoning hundreds and hundreds of people, hundreds of businesses and different individuals I knew and said, we need your help. And in the next day, I'm gonna need you to send us boxes and trucks and of these specific items. Um, and that's really what we did. And I connected with Ron and some of the other city agencies to say, you know, there is no power, there is no lighting. People were saying, oh, we'll go to the internet and we'll connect you. I said, there is no connection. There's nothing, <laughs> there's no lighting. And so what would happen is volunteers would come in the droves. And, um, but the problem was at 5 o'clock, everybody would disappear. And I was like, where do people go? And the reason they were disappearing was because the buses would only run 
until about five o'clock. There was one bus that would come in and then it would leave. So people were anxious that they did not want to stay there. They didn't want to be, be in the darkness. Um, and so I worked, you know, essentially trying to help set up a number of locations, about three or four locations in the Rockaways that could work together. And it was very, very difficult because there was no communication. Um, phone lines and access between those different points was very difficult. Phones would come in and go out. Um, but I think we did our best, and I think one of the things that I learned most about it was having um, real on-the-ground knowledge is absolutely essential. If you have no on-the-ground knowledge to know where things take place or where people live, it's, it's really scary. Um, but we had um, Doctors Without Borders and a couple of other healthcare um, social service agencies that came and were trying to help again. Um, and I think for a long time, you know, we had um, uh, uh, the folks from various uh, volunteer organizations that came out and helped for a period of time. But I think the thing that was most uh, essential was to try and have and support community-based groups on the ground with um, some kind of connection, some kind of a partnership that they could work together and say there's clothing here and there's you know, uh, places to sleep here, and to find various locations to set up a specific network um, so that services aren't duplicated because I would say after only about a week there were so many of certain items and and you know then limited access to others and that was the one thing that was you know really upsetting was to see all these people throwing out debris from their homes only to find even more clothes that were being donated and tossed on the ground you couldn't tell what was what had been destroyed and what was garbage and what was you know uh, uh, useful helpful things so Basically, find out. Uh, there were a lot of volunteers, a lot of people put in of good intentions. Did that in any way put stress on the local organizations and how it works? So I'm going to ask the parents and then the folks from Red Hook on how they handle that kind of activity, as well as your other emotive So, yeah, you know, I live in a community that was in last night. Had my building flooded, and yeah, it was kind of quiet and eerie, and people were just trying to figure it out. We um, went to the goals office, which was in the flood zone, but did not get flooded above ground, but got flooded underground, which is a really big problem in the Lower East Side. Unlike other neighborhoods, where you see a lot of the destruction above ground. In our community, which is landfill, a lot of the destruction is underground. In any event, uh, we went to the office to see if we could open it up and start some kind of thing. I just wanted to turn on a generator in a generation bowl. And um, we had no internet. We had one boat working for a line from 11 lines that we had. We had no power, and so we planned it off in the candlelight. Um, and we were able to get a call through to someone who was able to put a post on line. And the, before you know it, there were more than 100 people on our sidewalk. And someone came in and said, there are a lot of people outside. I said, what, like 10, 20? They said, no, there's a lot of people. Um, so I went out and I was completely overwhelmed. Uh,